This is just a warning. This video is full of rambling. It's interesting. It's valid. But, uh, yeah. I apologize for that. Anyway, I hope hey you enjoy. Hey everyone. So, I'm filming my bathroom today because I can. And, yeah. I felt like it. So that's why I'm here. In case anyone was wondering. Today's video is going to be about dreaming and out-of-body experiences, or astral projection. Anyways, I'm just going to get started. I'll start off with dreams. So, there... Okay, I'm going to sit on my like my butt, because that was getting uncomfortable. Oh, I'm going to sit with my legs stretched out. That's more comfortable. I have really short legs, in case anyone was wondering. I'm going to scoot you back a little bit. Okay, so basically there are five levels of sleep. And it doesn't really matter what the first four are. The, what matters is that you know that the fifth one is REM sleep. And that is your deepest form of sleep and the only level of sleep that dreams occur in. Now every night you get about, and I, I don't really know because I'm not an expert in this field like of dreaming, but from my understanding, you get about five to ten minutes of REM sleep every night. And what you remember of your dreams happens within the last five minutes before you wake up. So that's pretty crazy because sometimes you have like these really out there and elaborate dreams and it's weird to think that all of that is processed through your mind within five minutes. Yeah, especially for me because I'm the type of person who just has like crazy, like vivid, like really detailed dreams. And that's just really fascinating to me. Anyways. A metaphor that um, psychologists or dream therapy, I don't know what a person's called when they study dreams, but anyways, people who study dreams like to use the metaphor of when you're in your waking state, it's like you're standing on the beach. You're separate from everybody else, but then when you're dreaming, it's like you dive into the ocean, so you're less separate. Um, the water is connecting everyone, as well as you can feel everyone's vibrations um, more clearly. It's like when you, when you throw a pebble into a pond and the ripple emotions like affect everything that's nearby. It's like your being in your dream state and the vibrations that y you give off from being in that dream state is affecting everyone else in the surrounding area. So the importance of dreaming is that you're working through your problems while you're asleep. I don't know if anyone watched that one episode of Charmed when a demon like attacked the Sandman and he couldn't spread the dream dust on people and um, they they had like were really angry when they were awake because they didn't have their dreams to work out their problems. So and that's kind of what it would be like if you didn't dream, you wouldn't be able to work out your like just little issues that you deal with in your waking life. So that's why dreaming is really, really important. Another thing is that symbols in dreams are different for everyone. I know that there's lots of websites and books that are dedicated to different symbols and different things that happen in your dreams and what they mean. That's good for kind of a general idea of what they could mean, but for the most part, every symbol in your dreams is individual. I know that for me, when I was little, I used to have a lot of dreams about dinosaurs, and dinosaurs would chase me all around my town, and I'd have to hide from them, and I stopped having those dreams for a while, but then when I was in grade 9 and 10, I started having them again, and what I came to the conclusion was that the dinosaur represented, was it like a representation of me blowing things out of proportion, and being scared of something that wasn't really a big deal after all. And that kind of makes sense because why should I be scared of dinosaurs when they're extinct and they no longer exist in our physical world? So that's kind of how, what I interpreted from that. And ever since I found that out, I've never had a dream about a dinosaur since. It's really important to, when you have a reoccurring dream or reoccurring symbols in dreams, to find out what those mean to you. Because that will really help you work through your problems. If you keep dreaming of one specific thing or a series of specific things, it probably means you're not dealing with issues in your waking life. 
and so you need to figure out what those symbols mean and address them so that you can, you know, progress and be able to work through those issues. Another form of dreaming would be lucid dreaming. Now, lucid dreaming is really not a good form of dreaming, even though it's probably really, really cool to some people. To me, it's not. Anyways, basically what lucid dreaming is, is the ability to control what happens in your dreams. Because as most of us know, we don't have the ability to be able to make decisions in our dreams. Things just kind of unfold in front of us. And really, that is like our subconscious making decisions for us. And that's part of the process of working through your problems that you have in your waking state. If you have the ability to control what happens, you're not dealing with your problems because you can just take the easy way out or take the most convenient way or the less scary way out of your dreams. So lucid dreaming really isn't the best thing. And I know some people who have a lot of lucid dreams and they are not exactly mentally and emotionally stable. Another thing that happens when you're in your sleeping state or near sleeping state would be an out of body experience. Now an out of body experience is basically when your consciousness leaves your body completely. Your body is like the hard shell, you know one of those hard shell soft shell tacos with the, it has the hard shell and then it has the, the soft shell inside. It's like your body is the hard shell and then your consciousness and your mind and your like spirit or soul I guess if some like depending on who you are and what you believe in that's like the soft shell taco and basically an out of body experience or astral projection I guess is the more Hollywood term for it at least in my opinion I don't know but it's like the soft shell taco gets removed from the hard shell taco that was a really bad analogy, I think. Anyways, regardless, it's, a, it's your mind leaving your body. Now, out-of-body experiences have a couple different reasons. A lot of times when children have suffered abuse, like severe abuse, they develop the ability to leave their bodies to escape from that abuse. I know that when I was took law last year, um, we, when we did criminal law, we watched a lot of documentaries on children who had, or people had been abused as a child, and they, a lot of them were able to um, make their their consciousness leave their body um, when they were being abused to kind of just escape that. It can also happen from physical trauma, such as um, being in a car accident or like suffering from physical trauma of some sort. It happens a lot of the time with car accident victims and they just kind of leave their body. It can also happen when you're under anesthetic. I know that when I got my wisdom teeth taken out I had a out of body experiences and it was kind of gruesome because I feel like I was like floating above myself while I was getting my teeth out and there was like blood all in my mouth and it was really gross. But that's just, it's, it can happen. People can also make themselves have an out-of-body experience. I was just really uncomfortable there. I know. I'm a little bored. I've never made myself have, have an out-of-body experience, but I know people who have, and I don't know, like, it just seems kind of freaky to me. Like, when it happens to you randomly, it's like, okay, this isn't really my choice. But when it does, like, I feel like something could just go wrong because I'm not really sure because there's many debates on, like, planes of existence. But I feel like it's kind of a wild, when you have an astral projection or an out-of-body experience, it's kind of a wild card where you go. You could end up, like, in, like, an astral plane or you can end up in the physical plane. My English teacher was telling me the story that she had an out, one out of her, out of body experience in her lifetime, and she was sleeping over at her aunt's house, and she could feel herself leaving her body, and she went and she walked into her aunt's bedroom and was like looking over her while she was sleeping because she didn't know what to do or where to go, and then all of a sudden she woke up again, but she was in her bed, 
and she thought that it was just a dream but then she went downstairs in the morning and her aunt was like what were you doing in my room last night and she was like I thought that was just a dream but really what would happen what had happened is she had an out-of-body experience and I guess she was in like her astral self ended up in a, the physical plane but I don't know I think it's a really kind of scary thing to mess with personally because there's this, there's also the myth that butterflies were the souls of witches and that um, when, a, when a witch would leave her body because astral projections were said to be like witchcraft I guess um, but when a witch would leave her body, her soul would, she would turn into a butterfly. And if you turned her body over uh, before the butterfly could come back, before her soul could come back, then the witch would die. So every time I see a butterfly, I think of uh, the souls of a witch. Um, so that's why butterflies are really important to me. I don't know if this video has a purpose. The point is... Um, dreaming is really important and there's a lot of powers that you can, that, that, that your mind has. And I don't think that it's just pertain pertains to people who are more spiritually open, although it's more likely to happen to them because they are more open to that. I also think that it depends like on your elemental affirmation, but it really depends on like what element you associate with. Because I know that my sister, she, her element's earth. And she has never had an out-of-body experience. She's never experienced astral vibra vibrations. And I think that's because she's so grounded. And that's because that's her element. So I don't know if that has an, anything to do with it. I also think children are more susceptible to out-of-body experiences. Because I know that when I was a kid, I had a lot more out-of-body experiences than I do now. And I could make myself... Like, I couldn't make myself, per se, but... It would happen like when I was awake and I was talking to friends and they said, yeah, when I was little, I used to have out of body experiences a lot. So I don't know if it's something that children are more susceptible to, but it's definitely an interesting theory. I don't know. Did you ever have out of body experiences when you were little or have them now or have had them ever? I also think it's interesting because it makes us a little bit more linked. And when you think about it, we're really not as separate as we think we are. We're all kind of going on the same wavelength. And uh, I think it's just really interesting. So I suppose my whole purpose of making this video was to kind of convey the message that looking into what your dreams mean and expanding your mind to be able to tap into the powers that everyone you know is able to tap into really enhances our spiritual awareness and it makes us realize that we're not all separate beings and that we are connected in more ways than we think that we are somebody in Kentucky could have the same dream as someone in Africa. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, we're not as separate as we think we are. And the stronger the vibrations are, you know, the more powerful and the more people are affected by that. I don't know. It's really interesting. And it's definitely something that I want to look into farther. And that I think everyone should be aware of. Anyways. So that's all that I wanted to really talk about. So I hope that you're having a wonderful week and blessed be.